Hello everyone, this is Nabil Murad from Toronto, Canada. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about summing and I'll be using different functions and different techniques for performing the summing, which is beyond a doubt the most commonly used calculation in Excel. I'll be comparing between three functions, the sum function, the subtotal function, and the aggregate function. Let's get started with the sum function. I have a list of transactional values and I would like to sum up the sales. So I'm going to select cell G21. I could of course type equal sum, and then I hit the tab key, and then I select the range that I would like to sum, close the bracket and hit enter. That's very basic. I'm going to delete. I can also use the auto sum button. The auto sum is available on the right side of the home tab, and it's also available on the left side of the formulas tab. So I'm going to click on this sigma symbol, the auto sum, and Excel puts the sum function in the destination and it picks up the range that I want to sum. All what I have to do is to hit enter. The next method for performing a sum is relatively new to Excel. It was introduced for the first time in Office 2013. I'm using Office 2016 right now. And all what I have to do is to select the range that I would like to sum. And this little icon pops up at the corner of my selection. We call it the Quick Analysis Tool. If you click on the Quick Analysis Tool, you will see a lot of functionality for performing conditional formatting, for creating charts, for creating tables, spark lines. For now, I'm going to select the total step. And on the total, you will see a wealth of options. I'll be selecting the sum. And with this simple click, I created the sum function. One more method for performing the sum, I'm going to delete this number. I'll be using the shortcut Alt equal equal. That's the shortcut for summing. And here is the sum. What are the limitations of the sum function? In this list, what if I apply a filter? Uh, to apply a filter, I can go to the data tab and click on filter. That's one way of doing things. I'll be using the shortcut Control Shift L, and then I'm going to exclude some of the regions. Let's say I don't want the Midwest region. Look at the sum. When I hit OK, I expect that the filter tracker should be excluded. So when I hit OK, the filter trackers are not excluded, and that's confusing. So what if I remove the filter, Control shift l Another limitation of the sum function, if you select some rows, let's say I'm selecting rows from 5 to 10, and I would like to hide them, I could right-click and hide. I'm going to use the shortcut for hiding, and the shortcut is Control 9 and when I hit Control 9 the rows are hidden, but unfortunately the hidden rows are not excluded from the calculation from the sum function. And these are two limitations for the sum function. So what do I do in this case? I switch to a more powerful function, the subtotal function. And the subtotal function has two arguments, not only a single argument. It does not perform simply summing. It can perform 11 different calculations. Let's type equal subtotal. And then when I hit tab, you will see that the screen tip requires two input values. So I have a function number and then I have a reference. For the function number, I have some numbers from 1 to 11. And then if you scroll down, you will see the same exact function from 101 to 111. So I created this graphic to explain the difference. The numbers from 1 to 11 include the same exact functions. The numbers from 1 to 11 will include the hidden rows, while the numbers from 101 to 111 will exclude the hidden rows. So if you want to include the hidden rows, you use one of these numbers. If you want to exclude the hidden rows, you use one of the numbers between 101 to 111. And here are the names of the different functions. Let's start by creating a subtotal function, equal subtotal, and then I hit the tab key. I would like to perform a sum. I'll be using first the one that doesn't exclude the hidden rows, so I'll select nine. This is for the sum function, and then I hit comma. What would you like to sum? I'm going to sum these numbers, so I close bracket and hit enter, and here is my total. Let's test it. So I'm going to test it by hiding some rows. So I'll select row from 5 to 10, and I'm going to hide it using the shortcut Control 9, and the hidden rows are not excluded from the calculation. I'll bring them back, Control Shift 9. 
And now I'm going to modify this function. Instead of using 9, I'll be using the 109, which means it will exclude the hidden rows. So I'm going to edit my function. I'll put the function in the edit mode by hitting F2. And I'm going simply to edit that number from uh, 9. I'll make it 109 and then hit enter. So if I hide the rows right now, the same exact rows, and then control 9 to hide, the hidden rows are excluded from the calculation. I'll bring them back. Let's test the filter. Any one of these numbers, what, whether you use it with the numbers from 1 to 11 or 101 to 111, both of them will ignore the filter draws. So the filter draws will not be included in my calculation. Let's test. I'm going to select any single cell and then Control shift l to bring the filter. And let's say I want to exclude some of the sales rep and then when I hit OK, look at the result. It excludes the filter draw. So the subtotal function is in fact more powerful than the sum function. It offers a lot more functionality than the sum function and it includes 11 different functions that can be used in two different ways. What about the aggregate function? The aggregate function is even more powerful than the subtotal function. Why? Because not only it includes the 11 function, but it includes a lot more. So we do have function number 12, the median function, which is a measure of central tendency. We have the mode function and the functions from 14 to 19, these are array function. What does it mean array function? It means function that perform on ranges. That's why the screen tip of the aggregate function can be one of two screen tips, which means you can use the aggregate function in two ways. So for now, for this tutorial, I'll be using the aggregate function in comparison with the subtotal and the sum function. Let's see how the aggregate function works. I'm going to type equal aggregate, and then I hit tab. What would you like to do? I would like to perform a sum function, so I'll select number 9, and then I hit tab, and then look at the next argument. The next argument asks me, what would you like to ignore? Would you like to ignore nested subtotals and aggregate functions? Would you like to ignore hidden rows? Would you like to ignore nothing? Would you like to ignore error values? I'm going to select number five for ignoring hidden rows, and then I'm going to hit tab, and then comma. The last argument is, what would you like to sum? I'm going to select this range, close the bracket, and hit enter. At this point, the aggregate function works like the subtotal function, but that was the maximum capacity of the subtotal. The aggregate function can do a lot more than this. Now, let's compare. I'm going to select any cell, apply a filter, Control shift l and let's say I would like to filter the regions, so I'm going to exclude some of the regions, and sure enough, the aggregate function excludes the filter draws. If I bring them back, Control shift l and now what if I want to hide some rows? I'll hit Control 9 to hide rows, and definitely the aggregate function is excluding the values from the hidden rows. In my next tutorial, I'll be using the aggregate function as an array function to extract records outside of the source list. Thank you for watching. Until we meet in another tutorial, your comments are much appreciated.